Great thing about the peak rut is that it's not just the only portion of the rut that you can hunt. There's other great opportunities, the pre-rut, rut lockdown, and then right after the peak rut too. But the peak rut is fleeting. It's a short period of time, it's intense, and it's all day fun. And what I mean by that, it's a lot different than the rut lockdown. Rut lockdown, you employ, employ a lot of the same strategies because you're looking for morning bedding areas, afternoon food sources, you're looking at cruising all day. But peak rut is sometimes double, triple the amount of activity that would be during the rut lockdown because bucks are actively cruising and seeking their next doe often. They're not all just bunching up because a lot of does are coming into heat at one time like the rut lockdown. This is when the traditional rut where dreams are made, where people traditionally take their rutcation off and it's an incredible time to hunt. And that's why you need to have an all day strategy. So when I say all day strategy, all day fun, I'm referring to number two, morning versus evening stands. What you'll find is in the afternoon, the doe herd is moving towards their afternoon food source. Could be a clear cut on public land, hidden apple orchard on public land, a transition from hardwoods to lowland, from lowland to actual swamp, anywhere you have that habitat diversity or all of those coming together at once, that equals food, equals diversity, and that'll be that afternoon food source. On private land, hope you, you have food plots. Hopefully you're not relying on the whims of the farmland around you, just in the rotations and plowing to where you really don't have that consistent draw in a certain spot every single day like you would with a food plot or even a good food source on public land that you can find. Hopefully you have that. But what that does is all those does are going to that afternoon food source and those bucks follow. Those bucks are in those same areas. So that means that you have to have a different evening stand than your morning stand. Now sometimes that midday portion where deer are actually actively cruising, that could be that same stand location that you have in the morning, but a lot of times it's not that same stand location that you have in the afternoon, it could be. But think about it that way. You're looking at all day movement, all day potential but you're really looking at a difference between morning stands that relate to bedding, between bedding. And I mean on the outside of bedding area, you're not going into a big bedding area sitting right in the middle and going all in and all for broke. There's some strategists that do that and I don't like burning your stand out and your land one sit and you're done relying on one sit. I'd rather pick away, jab away, and eventually get your buck almost every time just because you're being careful and being conservative and spreading your risk around when you actually hunt instead of just putting it all in, all your eggs in one basket. So make sure you have different morning and evening stands. Again, morning related to bedding areas. And one thing you can't do, you can't go into an afternoon food source stand through a bedding area because you need those deer that are in the bedding area to go to the afternoon food source. So you're ruining your hunt before it even begins. And likewise, you can't go through a food source or an afternoon stand into a morning bedding area because that's where the deer are at in the morning as they're transitioning back to their bedding area. So now you just ruined your morning hunt because you're going through that food source that was actually offering up deer to that bedding area that you're going into, let alone ruining that afternoon hunt. So really make sure you get around that food source in the morning to get to a bedding area. And when you're going to an afternoon store of a stand location, you're staying well away from your bedding area stands. So you're not spooking up those bedding area stands. Now, number three, weather rules. If it's a bad hot day, deer aren't going to move that far. If it's a very windy rainy day, bucks aren't going to cruise that far. They will still be active. They'll still move around, but they're going to stick a lot closer to home. If it's very windy, bucks will, in your hill country, bucks will be down in the lower portions, in the lower valleys, the half, the lower, the lee side, the areas that aren't exposed to the wind. That's what's great about hill country. If it's very windy and it's during the rut, you can find a disproportionate amount of deer stuck down in those quiet areas to get out of the wind, the lee side, the side not facing the wind. So very important that. But the weather, think about it. if you have cool, crisp mornings, cold mornings, doesn't matter what the, doesn't matter if you have a front coming tomorrow, a front just went through, if it's cold, moderate winds, big clearing just took place, meaning heavy rain, heavy snow subsided, it's gonna, and it's during the rut, it's gonna be a great time to hunt. So plan accordingly for that. If you can slant your vacation days to that, do so. You'll be rewarded handsomely. If you can take days off on a rutcation to do something else and not burn out stands and land, do so. If you can conserve your best stands for the best weather days that we show on HuntCast through HuntWise, or I talk about in all my videos, do so. 
because it'll pay off. That's most of my bucks are shot on good weather days, almost all of them, because I don't hunt on bad weather days. I just don't have the time to spare. I don't have all the time in the world. I don't go on week-long rutcations. I've been on one week hunt, one 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 week tr hunting trip ever. I usually go three or four days at a time because I just don't have that kind of time to spend for hunting. Never have, even though it's so important to me. I'll hunt a few days here, a few days there, based on the weather. That's how I plan my wet my weather rutcations. Number four, your location. Where's the peak rut begin? Peak rut begins in southwest Wisconsin, southeast Minnesota, over into the Dakotas, you could extend that over into Michigan, most of lower Michigan, into upstate Pennsylvania, southern New York, over into Vermont, New Hampshire. Your peak rut's going to begin 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 2nd of November. If you're down in that more southern tier where you're going from Oklahoma to Tennessee, over to West Virginia, Southern Kentucky, Virginia, even Southern Ohio, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, in that area you're going to look at more of the 10th, 12th, 14th, Kansas, in those areas. You're looking at that peak rut to begin more 10th, 12th, 15th in that time frame. So think about that. And I'm talking peak rut hunting activity. And what I mean by that, huntable activity, is you're not going by peak breeding dates. There's confusion there. Confusion there. For example, uh, UP of Michigan, there's been great studies to show that the majority of does are bred within a week to 10 days either side of the 13th of November. Unfortunately, if you wait to the 13th of November to hunt, you've already missed a week or two of great rut hunting because people are getting stands ready, they're pressuring the woods, they're pressuring blinds, and by the time you get into the 13th, you're two days away from an army going out of seven, 800,000 people for the opening day of gun season. That suppresses daylight activity. We're not talking about Iowa, Kansas, where you have a small percentage, just a fraction of the amount of hunters, even Kentucky. Big difference in some of those states where you don't have a lot of hunters. So huntable daylight activity keeps shrinking the more people pound the woods during the rut. So consider that in those peak rut time timing. And when you get down into Florida, Georgia, portions of those, those states, even Louisiana, you know, more in the deep south, it can have that trickle rut where it can happen at any time. And then, boy, my bet would be on the weather because if it's bad, warm, hot, windy, rainy weather, rutting activity will still take place, but it's probably going to take place after dark. So if you want daylight activity, look for cold fronts, look for good weather pans. When I say cold, it's all relative. Now, cold front could be in Florida, for example. It could be a just drop from average daytime highs from 92 down to 78. That's a big temperature drop. 78 is cool at that time of the year for the rut. No different than if we're in Wisconsin and it drops from daytime highs in the low 60s to now high 30s or low 40s. They're big temperature drops. That's what you're hunting and you're hunting the weather that it takes to get those temperatures to drop. Once those extreme weather patterns roll through and clear out, great time to hunt hunt and especially if it's during the rut. Bad to good stand roller coaster. What do I mean by that? You have nine days to hunt. That's what you do every year. Watch the weather, plan your sits accordingly based on the quality of your stands. Dylan and I have a great stand location to go to, to tonight. We have really good conditions. We had a big rainstorm all day afternoon. High winds are through this morning. The winds are diminishing tonight. It's going to be a great sit. We're going to a high quality stand location. It's one of those that we, we don't have a chance of seeing a lot of deer, but we have some really big bucks that we could have a potential to see there. This morning we went to a blind location that was down in a valley that we can get out of the winds, get out of any potential rain. We saw some deer. I'm not saying we didn't have a good chance of shooting a decent one, but where we're going tonight, I saved that stand. I wouldn't want to go there in that high wind this morning and potentially spook a deer out on the way in and burn out a good stand or great stand. And that's that roller coaster that you should be playing. Plan your sits out based on weather patterns and you'll be rewarded, meaning you're hunting your best stands during the best days, your worst stands during the worst days. And finally, number six, the peak rut unfortunately is seven to 10 days a year. But take comfort in the fact that you don't have to wait another year if it blows out and you don't get anything. Because a post rut is just around the corner. There's a few good days of hunting there. And then of course the second rut is the most missed time in the whitetail woods every single year. It's a great time to hunt. It's like having another peak rut, just fast forwarded another 25 to 30 days and you'll have a great hunt. So there's all kinds of phases to hunt. The peak rut is just one of them. Doesn't matter that it's only seven to 10 days, but think about that though. Think about how you plan your hunts over that seven to 10 days. It's a fleeting time. 
Make sure you're making your best play on the each day, whether it's a bad day or a good day. You're choosing your stands accordingly. You're being smart, making smart decisions based on the quality of the day versus the quality of the stand location. And that's how I navigate the peak rut. That's how I create opportunity. That's how I create an opportunity, whether it's on public land, private land, and you can too. Enjoy the peak rut. The peak rut only comes around once every year. It's a fleeting time, but make sure you're paying attention to all the other phases of the rut. Again, that's why we created Rutcast for you through the HuntWise app. I helped develop that. That's something that's very important to me along with HuntCast. That's why I developed my How to Hunt the Rut web class. I hope you check all of that out. But bottom line, if you don't, Check out the videos, learn from those for free. I hope you enjoy them. I hope they help. And that's all I want for you is to find success this, for this fall and beyond. So I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes so that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.